आई एम मिहिर बोरा चीफ इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफिसर ट्रस्ट म्यूचुअल फंड सीजन ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल Two thousand twenty-three has really been a phenomenal year for all of us, especially in the stock markets. Two thousand twenty-three was the year where India really stood out on its own. The relative attractiveness of India versus the rest of the world has never been better. And in twenty-three, I think the world realized the difference between India and other emerging markets. China is no longer an investable destination. the western world is slowing down and is likely to continue to slow down because of its demographics and india is the only large market which not only has a huge consumption market available but also has the manufacturing capacity potential because of its young demographics so i think the next 10 to 20 years will be india's and 2023 is just the beginning 2023 also saw the difference between global sectors and local sectors the year started with concerns of a global slowdown concerns of china slowing down concerns of a recession in the western world but as the year passed i think those concerns reduced but not to the extent that we don't expect a slowdown in the global markets but relatively speaking india continued to hold its own so the growth differential between india and the rest of the world actually expanded and the world is as bullish on india as it has ever been so i think the domestic flows which have been robust and accelerating will continue and this in the next year is likely to be aided by flows from the foreign participants domestic segments are likely to continue to do well versus global segments the 2024 elections are an important event but i think the markets are not expecting any major change in the regime especially after the three state elections outcomes uh, we do believe that the regime continuity is likely to uh, be the theme that the market uh, uh, discounts and to that extent all the agenda of the current regime of atmanirbharta make in india infrastructure creation uh, more participation by private sector and of course continuation of consumption are likely to be the things which will continue and which will continue to drive india's growth in the next few years fii's look at india in a very favorable light and in the last few weeks we have begun to see good inflows from fii's as global concerns of the us recession are reducing while the chances of a us recession are reducing india's growth seems to be sustaining that means that it's actually a goldilocks situation from the foreigners point of view you have a large emerging market which is growing fast and the global interest rate environment is benign inflation environment is also likely to become benign so to that extent i think the growth differential and the interest rate differential of india versus the rest of the world should continue to attract good fii flows not only into equities but also into fixed income markets so i think 24 begins on a promising note as far as flows to india are concerned both from foreigners as well as the domestic investors as we have already discussed so many times india has so far been a consumption market and a lot of the growth in the last 5 10 years has come because of sustained consumption by the young population Uh, however there are limits to growth that only consumption can produce with consumption alone we probably can grow at about 5 5.5% but if you want to go to the 7 or 8% mark it has to be on the back of investments and manufacturing i think the government also recognizes this and in the last few years most of the initiatives has been have been towards promoting more and more manufacturing into the country the defense procurement strategy to procure more locally huge amount of capex on railways infrastructure roads both by the private sector as well as the public sector and the production link incentive schemes that have been introduced for so many sectors are beginning to show their impact 2023 saw a lot of the segments linked to infrastructure manufacturing capital goods construction etc perform very well 
and I think this will only accelerate because in many segments we are just beginning to scratch the surface. So for 24, I would say that the themes to play would be domestic in nature, linked to investments, whether we talk about cement or whether we talk about construction, capital goods, uh, defense production, railway manufacturing, or even you know ancillary industries like real estate, where a lot of buildings have to be created, a lot of residential capacity and commercial capacity has to be created. So I think physical asset creation will be the theme and most domestic sectors are likely to, uh, are likely to do well in 2024. The trust group has vast experience across asset classes including equities, fixed income, real estate, etc. Investing is in the DNA of the group. Asset allocation is probably the most important decision that an investor has to make. If you have already planned out your investments for the next few years along with your financial planner, it makes sense to stick to it through market ups and downs. Just because the market has gone up or down does not mean that your asset allocation decision should change because that would have taken into account all your personal factors, your assets, liabilities, future goals, aspirations, social commitments, etc. And that's how you arrive, arrive at a strategic asset allocation. Uh, having said that, relatively speaking, yes, there are instances where certain asset classes go to extreme levels and probably there might be a chance to reallocate or rebalance your portfolio. So if I just look at equities versus fixed income versus other asset classes like say gold and real estate, I would say that relative to say three years ago, when equities were the go-to asset class, valuations had become very cheap after the COVID crash and it was a no-brainer. In the last three years, equities have outperformed very well. Valuations have now corrected to almost you know uh, average and above average levels and equities are not as attractive as say three years ago. On the other hand, interest rates have gone up in the, uh, interest rates have gone up in the last uh, 12 months. Yields are attractive. And we do expect that inflation is going to come down, which means that the bonds actually might do very well. So I would say that if you had a huge skew in favor of equities, now it makes sense to have a little more allocation to bonds compared to equities. And gold, which has also done well, but is also likely to be a hedge against good volatility in the markets that we expect, can also be a 5-10% allocation. So I would say that bonds also are becoming a very interesting asset class in 2024. The trust group and the trust mutual funds investment team have vast experience across all asset classes. Investments is an, in our DNA, whether it's fixed income, equities, real estate and any other asset class. We believe that with the experience of the group and the depth of the team at trust mutual fund, we will be able to offer very unique and differentiated products to the customers. We started in 2020 with the basic fixed income products, but now we are in the process of rolling out all products including equities to offer a wide range of choice for the customers. Our edge in investing comes from very differentiated insights into companies and stocks that we bring with our vast experience. We believe that there is ample scope for stock picking with such sharp and differentiated insights which will be the cutting edge of our investment process. The Trust Mutual Fund Investments team will be amongst the most experienced and seasoned investments teams in the industry and we do believe that this strength is something which will be unique for our customers and will offer long-term wealth creation to all our customers. We thank all our partners and investors for the support given to us in 2023. I am personally very excited for 2024 as we launch our equity products and will continue to develop on our product suite. Look forward to your continued support. Happy investing. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.